rapid movement when you get moved. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Orchestra of St. Luke's. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the orchestra, this is the Carnegie Hall Centennial Chorus. Because it is a difficult piece in, to pace the voice for its 74 minutes of duration, and because we won't and we won't allow them to sing too much today, but it's important that they have the chance to do it in sequence. So, I'm, so if you'll be gracious enough to wait for us, we'll begin with the first movement. Shouldn't hear that changeable white cover that way. Uh, not quite that much, but that's precise. began to sing with the orchestra, it distracted me a little bit because uh, sometimes I tend to get uh, carried away with listening to what they're playing. And But you, you acclimate, of course, after a little while. We've spent the last two days dealing with essentially an a cappella ensemble because the accompaniment was very, very gentle and very soft uh, with the piano. So people began to listen very closely to one another, became very sensitive to one another and to the nuance of the musical phrase because of the uniqueness of rehearsing in that manner. Now suddenly there's a totally different body of sound that's present around us. So people, it's more difficult for them to listen across the ensemble. It's much more difficult for them to hear their own part. And it's particularly difficult for them to allow themselves to be sensitive because of the feeling that I have to sing across this other body of sound for the, uh, for the tones to get to Mr. Shaw's ears. So it's a whole, it's a completely different mindset. And unless you have the ability to, to kind of pull back in and trust what you have learned in the last two days, you'll begin to start to sing out too loud or to, to no longer maintain the balance or the integrity of the musical sounds that we've been working toward for the last two days. Now, now every one of you attend enormously closely and sing quietly. Three, <laughs> Tempo, tempo. Once more, H, numbers, numbers quietly. Three, four. 
sort of like a jigsaw puzzle missing one third of the piece and when of the puzzle and when that last piece comes together it was it was beautiful up until now but when you throw the orchestra with it it was just even better than it was before singing with the orchestra for the first time was really a great experience um, they really brought out the power of the music that Brahms wrote and made it just brought a lot of more emotion into it than just the piano could there are many fine choral conductors who also conduct orchestras when they have to, but Mr. Shaw's career spans a high level of professionalism both as strictly an orchestral conductor as well as his many years of excellence in choral work. So to hear him build the, uh, the connections between choral music and orchestral music and vice versa, the number of times that he has used orchestral uh, examples to help us reinforce choral ideas and some of the things we have heard him tell the instruments uh, about how to use choral phrasing, choral ideas in their playing has been a most exciting thing and it's a, it's a terrific stimulus to me to see this, this sort of thing happening and to bridge this, this constant gulf that tends to exist between, if I may use the, the words of the profession, the singers and the musicians. So it's nice to see the singers treated, in fact, as musicians and to be, hear the instrumentalists asked to sing. Some kind of peace, huh? Yes, yeah, some kind of peace. I wrote it just for us. Isn't an absolute, absolute miracle that, 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 that it's, not, it's not finished until it sounds and you write it 110 or 15 or 20 years ahead and he counts on it being sounded. It's just unbelievable. I don't know when I've had such a happy afternoon. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Ten minutes. Thank you all very much, and we begin our the seminar in ten minutes. I I do have folks a, a number of cards, and I thought yesterday that somehow we um, we it, it 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 slowed things down to have the questions from the floor and run around, and there were so many questions and. And most, most of them are, are of general interest, I think, that it might help to, to, um, to go through them just, just rapidly. Could you speak a note about the importance of articulating vocally or internally the subpulses in order to unify the basic pulse? Do you have any tricks you share? Well, um, obviously it's, it's true that every, to get quarter notes together, everybody has to think eights. To get eights together, everybody has to think sixteenths. And you know, and, and to get whole notes together, you have to think halves, and so on. And and so, and, and the only trick I know is uh, uh, is is this uh, count singing, 
or, uh, you know, or staccato singing on uh, uh, don't let anybody sustain anything and do go right through and let them sing only the first 64th note of each note and be silent for the rest, the rest of the value, that sort of thing. How does the choral conductor achieve rhythmic precision without interrupting the cultural, the natural flow of the language and word stress? Uh, when we rehearse text on a monotone, that is to say, we, 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 we just, we're all singing. And then, as, as you know, uh, we do so much count singing that, that when it, it slips into it, um, we, um, uh, it, it, it slips in relatively easy if each nookie is perfect beforehand by itself. Um, and uh, 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 one additional qualification I think of that now is that uh, I occasionally find myself saying, as I've said in rehearsal to the choir yesterday, there are no weak beats uh, there, and there are, no, there are no weak syllables. Well, obviously there are. They're weak syllables and they're strong syllables. But, but when uh, if, if Stravinsky, you know, the, the wonderful thing that Stravinsky wrote on, uh, uh, on his last recording of, uh, of the Psalms, because he'd been criticized for, for his prosody. And he'd go, Laudate Dominum in virtutibus e us. Laudate Dominum in sanctis e us. You know, he said, I, I, you know, I know where the accents are. He said, but, but, but he's more interested in disturbing the accents, you see. And, and, and so that, that, that uh, uh, any, any composer is, should be allowed the possibility of, of putting in an accent on uh, on an unstressed syllable uh, and, and uh, to, to sharpen, uh, to fulfill the word rather than to define it. How do you decide on tempos? With, with great fear and trembling, you know? Um, uh, obviously the composer's indication first. And then, and then tradition. And tradition is important. Um, uh, the, um, uh, it's, it's important to to know if, you, if one can find out what Nikisch and Mengelberg and Weingartner did with the Beethoven symphonies. And, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and then uh, I suppose the, the, the structural uh, things are that you try, to get, uh, you try to get absolute clarity of detail without losing an arch of, of the long line. And so one has to, has to monkey and one has to, has to adjust and one has to, has to work at uh, until, until, and, and, until the tempo becomes a little clear of itself. It reveals itself a little bit if, uh, if, if, one, if one is willing to, 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 to experiment on, on uh, either side. In is the changing of vowels on the unison pitch to maintain intonation despite the mismatch of vowel? Yes, of course. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, what's uh, uh, absolutely one hopes, one hopes will happen. One will get used to, to being able to. Um, I spoke at one time in rehearsal, I'm not sure as thoroughly as it should be said, that, that in this respect, uh, singing in choruses and vocal, vocal music is incredibly more difficult than instrumental music. And that is that one is asked to sing uh, hundreds and perhaps even thousands and perhaps even hundreds of thousands of different sounds on different pitches. And it's as though one had to put down an oboe and pick up a clarinet to play the same, the next note, to pick up a flute, to play the third note, to pick up a bassoon, to play the fourth note, you know, because each, each uh, syllable uh, is, is a different, uh, uh, is a whole different, different sound. Every vowel, every difference in voweling is, is, a, is, a, is a difference in, in uh, strenuousness of, uh, of certain uh, partials. And uh, obviously, that's one of the reasons why it's very difficult to sing certain vowels on high pitches, you know, because <laughs> you, it, it can't, be, can't be done there, because, because the, the, uh, the, the vowel calls for, for, a different, for a different pitch of its, of its, of its uh, 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 stress. And, uh, so, so uh, in middle register, uh, for warm-up purposes, we do uh, mix all mixing of vowels and hum consonants to see if we can unify the sound uh, uh, out of, uh, uh, in spite of the fact that we use different, uh, different uh, text, uh, different words. Do you have to be able to sing well to be a good and effective choral conductor? Uh, the, the, uh, the better, the better. Uh, you know, if it doesn't if it doesn't make you approach uh, uh, approach uh, uh, rehearsals as a singing lesson, 
rather than a, as a music lesson. Please describe in more detail your use of putting a little space before a note even within a phrase. This is new to me. Well, it's not very old with me either. Um, uh, the chorus is a legato instrument. It's a sostenuto instrument, and we came close to getting a couple of times yesterday was a chamber chorus of 145 people, which I'd seldom heard in my life, if ever. I don't believe I ever heard a chamber chorus of 145 people. And, and, uh, and part of it was this particularity. I, 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 I don't like final cadences sort of smearing off and, bl and, 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 and you know, and dripping over the, over the bar line. And, 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 Thing. And and uh, and so and, and and every any anything that can make the large chorus just a little crisp and clean it's, feels to me a little more respectful. It, it, it's uh, it's it's sort of that. It it feels a, a little more good taste rather than than, than, than sloppy emotion. And so uh, I, so I say uh, uh, so I say I over I over say, and you know I say silence. I really don't mean it. I, I mean, uh, I, I don't mean, I say stop singing before the final chord. I don't mean it. I mean, dis, just, as you dis, uh, just as you disappear, arrive at the final chord and then, and then give it an itness too. Uh, uh, my ear tells me that this wonderful chorus is not unanimous in its pronunciation of the German. Will you address this and how? I would have thought we should have done the text. Uh, we should have, it should be done when text was first added. Uh, yeah, I, I think so too, except I was, uh, and I think uh, to, to, to go to the text meant yesterday uh, afternoon to introduce another person into, the, and I hadn't had time to do that yet, to introduce, and I was also trying to get through the last three to four movements as we had approached them. And I thought also that, uh, that since we hadn't sung them with text yet, I thought that it was important uh, that we, we do it once before we before we criticize and before we, we, we correct, I don't, I don't mean criticize. I didn't mean it in you know find fault with. I mean just before we before we correct, we should have something to correct somehow. So so I went ahead there. But but um, since most of choral text is um, is relevant and related to and responsible to metrics and the precision of time, there are two. There there uh, for me for me there are only uh, there are only two sort of. Uh, uh, rules of enunciation. The first is that every sound of every word is to be phonated. And the second is that every sound of every word is to have a specific instant in time when it is phonated. I, I've just found it possible because of metrical, the, the, the wonderful metrical disciplines uh, that, that you, you, you've, you've, you've done, uh, I find it possible to correct uh, the, the, the text things rather quickly. Uh, but we certainly will spend at least a third of tomorrow morning's rehearsal on, uh, on textual things. Um, thank you for the suggestion and the, and the criticism. <laughs> um, it's time for us to let you folks go home and, and rest a while. And we'll all meet tomorrow at, with, uh, with affection and warmth and stuff at, uh, at Carnegie Hall. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, good to see you, darling. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Coming here and seeing the schedule, I thought the schedule would be incredibly tiring. But watching Mr. Shaw work at the level of energy at which he works, I find myself energized and find the hours just fly. I'm really surprised when I leave here in the, in the evening and we've worked as long as we have. I'd like to do some more in the evening, I think. stage of Carnegie Hall in its centennial year, I think is a great honor. Wow. Nonsense, nonsense. 
Good morning. Our businesses are two today. One is to get used to the stage, that's the first artistic business. And the second thing is to uh, clean up our German a little bit. Come on, let's get up. <laughs> Face this way and rub thy neighbor. Reverse. Better. Better friends if you don't talk. Um, I know some soloists who simply will not talk at all on the days that they have to sing, because talking wears out voices more than singing does. Give us a David natural, D. Quiet leaves me. Moving from a rehearsal hall to a performance hall initially can cause insecurity and a diminution of vocal sonority. It's particularly difficult in a case like this where the choir never has sung together before. They have to find their own sound on the stage. And that's one of the reasons we did an entire hour of warm up before the orchestral rehearsal. Isn't that incredible? Incredible, incredible sound. Can you hear it? I'm in the hall. First word of the piece. Yeah, somebody told me yesterday from, that was listening that it sounds like sing. On pitch. Try it again. That's it. And zint, same thing. It's for me difficult to go zelich zint and get that voiced consonant in there in rhythm. Would you try it? Zelich zint. Hang on. Now careful. The word is lebendigen, not lubendigen. Some of us are just not quite sure about that. Lebendigen, lebendigen. Do it like that, please. I think it's better that we rest. Uh, we did more singing yesterday than I had, than I had really thought we would, and uh, but it was it was you know it, it was a glorious afternoon. And if we don't, if we if we decide we after we get whom we want to forget the concert, uh, we, we at least can hold on to yesterday afternoon. <laughs> it was just very very wonderful wonderful things happened. Have a have a pleasant 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 morning. A little, a little bit late, pleasant morning, but uh, it's best that we rest until this afternoon. And we won't, we'll try not to sing too much this afternoon too, so we have it for tomorrow afternoon. See you.
Mr. Shaw is far and away the most spiritual conductor I've ever worked with. And I mean that in the large scheme of things, not the, the easily definable cliché meaning that people so, uh, can so easily mean when they say spiritual. Mr. Shaw's spirituality is, is it's cosmic, it's, it's enormous, it's, and it, it, it makes you, you, you have to believe the words and the music to, um, you can't help but after you've been working with him for about a week. Feel a little pushed by tempo. Am I dragging? I'm a schlepper. Yeah. I'm a schlepper. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no. But, but do you but, feel pushed? No. 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 I'll, all right. I'll be all right. I'll all right. Be great. Good. Let me read these few questions I have, and then if you have any others, I'd just be happy to to, to <laughs> demonstrate my ignorance. Um, there's a strange question here that I'm not quite sure I understand. You've developed the use of harmonic overtones in balancing voices. What do you listen for to achieve the right sound? How do you know what to adjust and to and why? Uh, I, I, as we do our tuning and as we begin our tuning on F sharp and E in the low register, I obviously listen for that twelfth above, which happens on an ah vowel very easily. And, and doesn't happen on other vowels uh, quite so consistently. Uh, but I'm not conscious of, uh, uh, well, I, 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 I sort of fool choirs a little bit to tell them, and I fool myself while I'm saying it, that if we could really sing that much in tune, we'd carry that 12th along with us no matter where we went. And it's, and it's true in theory, but it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's far from successful in practice, obviously. Uh, the rapid change of vowels uh, creates a, series, a different series of partials, and uh, but it uh, it sure is true that that a uh, uh, that a choir singing in tune is twice as loud as a choir not singing in tune. They're just singing the same dynamic. Uh, when you, you repeat a work such as the German Requiem in your score preparation, is your score preparation the same as when you prepared previously? Well, I, one hopes that it's a little more knowledgeable, you know, and, and, uh, but, but one goes through the same thing. One, uh, I, I find <laughs> every time I, I do a performance, I want somebody to hand me a fresh score and I want to re-edit the whole thing again. And I want to re-edit the vocal parts and I want to re-edit the, the score. And obviously, by the time you've done that two or three times and, and got a new set of parts each time, you find out you're running out of money. And, and so you, but, but, so one does the same thing. One, I, one looks at, at every at every editing, and and begins to change things in terms of uh, of uh, past experience. <laughs> if you could only prepare and perform one final piece, what would be your selection and why? You know, um, the pieces in my business are sort of scheduled two years ahead, and I'm I'm sure I'm going to be most surprised when I'm, when I find out it's my last one. You know. <laughs> <laughs> See you, see, you, see you tomorrow, and don't, don't, don't be late, because we can use every minute we have. You can get into superlatives, of course, when you talk about Robert Shaw, and you talk about New York, and you talk about Carnegie Hall. Of course, this is a wonderful celebration for the hall, and it's a great hall with a tremendous tradition. And um, it's, a, it's a very exciting experience to do this piece in that place. However, I would sing this piece with Robert Shaw on 42nd Street, in the middle of the street, if that were where we were performing it. Same thing. Two, three, four. One.
just stepping on a stage for the performer is, is a somewhat false uh, situation. Uh, what had been built in rehearsal was a was was a, a sort of a combined effort, and now, in a sense, all of a sudden, you realize you and you see that vast expanse of seats and of space, and you realize that that in a in, you're, you're in show business, in a sense, and you're there to show off. The performer in has been in a situation which was a commitment only to the composer, and now it's a commitment to uh, uh, to, to somebody else listening, uh, who. Uh, uh, who was not present in, 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 the, in, in all the sweat and, and, and all the work. Uh, it seemed to me that these rehearsals of this past week uh, were more uh, uh, more thoroughly high and on a plane of, of, of high psychological uh, participation than almost any rehearsals I can remember in my life. I can't remember another period as uh, quite as intense as this and uh, where, where sort of so much was accomplished artistically and, and where I could work at the top of, of, my, of, of my abilities. Uh, I, I felt no sort of no restrictions somehow. I felt I could say anything that I that, that I could could think. There's no reason why we couldn't do this every year for the next maybe 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think that everyone who goes back home, wherever back home is, whether it's to sing in a chorus or to prepare a chorus for performance, that somehow what they've gained from this week will make the situation at home better, so that the performance level will improve every place they go. It's been quite a while since I sang in, in a choir. Uh, I conduct a lot of choirs, and this being on the other side of the stick is a real experience for me to, to again remind myself of how difficult it is to do the things that I ask my singers to do. I try to do too much all at once back home. I try to do the words and the music and the meaning and the cosmic significance all in the first 15 minutes. And it really requires intellectually understanding the different parts and putting the, taking those apart and putting them together. So I think I'm going to be much more specific and much more patient with the process. When I first got that, that uh, notice, I thought, no, I couldn't, and I did, and I shared this with my students, and I think that's the biggest thing, that through my doing it, they can see that they can do it, too. A great performance can never happen, in, never, never, never happen in a bad hall. I was honored by being there, and, uh, I, I, uh, and it was a very great joy. I felt no sort of of the butterfly type things before walked on stage. It was just a very, very happy occasion.
I was enormously touched by the quietness of the uh, audience at the conclusion of the piece. I'd never heard that silence quite as profound before. I, I think most, most everybody involved in that performance, uh, certainly the members of the chorus, uh, will, uh, will be re recalling it in conversation and in, in, in um, the silence of their lonely rooms, what I think of you night and day, uh, you know, for years and years. I hope the uh, participants come away with, with some rehearsal techniques that will uh, will help them with it in their own choruses. All of us want to come away with uh, simply the joy of making music together, just simply that happiness. And there are very few things that that, that, that one can do in 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 communion in communion or unity with 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 other human beings that do not diminish the human being. And this ennobles the human being. And ain't that, and ain't that just unbelievable?